hello students today we are going to study mobile communication a cellular radio system provides standard telephone operation by full duplex two way radio at remote locations cellular radios or telephones can be installed in cars trucks and are also available in handheld models each cellular telephone permits the user to link up with the standard telephone system that permit calls to any part of the world initially a single high powered transmitter with an antenna mounted on a tall tower was used to cover large service area as shown in the figure but this type of communication required greater bandwidth the service provider could not make spectrum allocation in proportion to the increasing demand of the mobile services and the power of the telephone system was reconstructed to obtain high capacity with limited radio spectrum while at the same time covering large areas so this concept was disadvantageous particularly in order to cover the number of users and large area later on the cellular concept was a major breakthrough in solving the problem of user capacity and the spectral congestion it offers very high capacity in a limited spectrum the cellular concept was proposed by bell labs in 1971 the geographic area is divided into smaller cells as shown in the figure the neighboring cells do not use the same set of frequencies here you can observe each frequency is shown by a different color and no same colors are in neighboring of each other which depicts that the neighboring cells do not use the same set of frequencies often the size of the cell was idealized hexagon and this increased the system capacity by frequency reuse here you can observe how cellular concept is implemented the geographical area is divided into small hexagonal cells each cell has its own radio tower it is called as a base station and all these base stations are connected to mtso mtso is mobile telephone switching office and this mtso is connected to landline telephone network that is pstn public switching telephone network so what the cellular concept is and why the mobile phone is called as cell phone the mobile telecommunication uses a cellular concept for communication the whole city is divided into small areas called as cells the cells are thought of hexagons and each cell is called as a base station base station is a low power transmitter the same frequencies can be used in non adjacent cells but they cannot be used in neighboring cells 
each cell or the base station is linked to MTSO that is mobile telephone switching office. The mobile telephone switching office coordinates all mobile calls. The base station has transmitter as well as receiver. Now let us see what are the functions of MTSO that is mobile telephone switching office. Mobile telephone switching office controls all cells and provides the connection between all cells and the main office. It provides handover when phone moves from one cell to another cell. It controls the transmitter output power. It monitors RSSI. RSSI means the received signal strength indicator and makes decision about the switching frequency. It provides frequency division ratio which decides the transmit and receive frequency of the mobile station. So these are the main functions of mobile telephone switching office. Now let us study different parameters of the cell. The cell is a basic geographic unit. It is a base station which transmits over a smaller area. Its size is not fixed. Shape may not be hexagon but it is approximately hexagon. The cells can be categorized as macro cell, micro cell, pico cell depending on their size. Macro cell ranges from 2 to 24 kilometer radius with output power ranging from 1 to 6 watt. Micro cell ranges from 500 meter radius and its power ranges from 0.1 to 1 watt. Pico smell cell are very smaller cell than micro cell and they are used for indoor applications. Now as the tower is situated at the center of the cell and the radiation becomes weak as the distance increases. At a particular distance the radiation do not interfere if the same frequency is not used. And this distance is given by d is equal to square root of 3 into k into r where d is the distance between two cells, r is the radius of cell and k is the number of cells in a cluster. If cellular circular cells were used, holes were present and there cannot be communication. Therefore, hexagonal cells are preferred. Transmitter can be placed at the center of the cell or at the cell's vertices. The co-channel interference between the cells is given by Q is equal to D upon R where D is the distance between two cells and R is the radius of the cell. That means you can see here co-channel interference depends both on distance and radius of the cell. The compromised value for co-channel interference Q are used. So in cellular concept what you have to remember is the cell is a basic geographic unit. It transmits over a small area. It is called as a base station. Its size is not fixed but its shape is hexagon, approximate hexagon. Uh, circular shape is not used. Macro cell, micro cell and pico cell are used. The radiation becomes weak as the distance increases and therefore the cell which do not interfere can be designed by using 
equation d is equal to square root of 3k into r. The transmitters can be placed either at the center of the cell or at the vertices of the cell. The co-channel interference also dependent on the distance between the cells and the radius of the cell. Now what is meant by cluster? Cluster is nothing but a group of cells and cluster contains number of cells with unique frequencies. The frequencies are not repeated in a cluster and such clusters are repeated so that there will not be any interference of the frequency and the frequency can be reused. And as we can reuse the frequency, the electromagnetic spectrum is efficiently used in cellular type of communications system. There are certain advantages of cellular system and these advantages are We can reuse the frequency as many times as possible and as many times as essential. The co-channel interference is kept below acceptance level. As the demand for service increases, the number of base stations can be increased to supply an additional radio capacity with no additional increase in radio spectrum. This is very, very important. As the frequency is reused, even if demand increases, the use of radio spectrum remains the same. This is a attractive feature of the cellular communication system. The cellular concept allows each cell phone to be manufactured with the same set of channels. This is also very very important so that any mobile can be used anywhere in the service region. So this standardization is very important and which is maintained in the cellular concept. So these two attractive features of cellular system made it very popular in the world. Now, students, let us discuss what is hand of problem in mobile communication. Hand of is a process of switching from one frequency channel to another by user when he is moving from one cell to another cell. Normally this is done by a parameter called as RSS that is received signal strength indicator signal to noise ratio and bit error rate. So these three parameters are monitored by mobile, main mobile station and depending on the received signal strength, signal to noise ratio and bit error ratio, the unit decides whether to switch from one frequency to other frequency and this triggering of frequency from one frequency to other frequency either by base station or by the mobile station itself is called as hand of problem in mobile communication system. So in a simple way we can say that the mobile unit, as the mobile unit moves out of coverage area of cell site, 
the reception becomes weak that is what we have seen earlier if we move away from the base station the received signal strength becomes weak and it goes on decreasing when the user moves away from the base station if this strength goes to a level called as threshold level the present cell site requests handoff now the system switches call to new cell without interruption the mobile telephone switching office monitors rssi that is received signal strength indicator signal and if mobile moves from cell 1 to cell 2 the rssi of cell 1 decreases and as rssi of cell 1 decreases the base station requests the handoff if rssi is below threshold level it checks the rssi of all neighboring cells and selects the frequency with maximum rssi so the cell is surrounded by number of cells having different frequency but the algorithm is designed such that the frequency of the cell is assigned whose rssi value is maximum at that time in this way the frequency of the mobile station changes from cell 1 to cell 2 this process is called as the handoff concept thank you